All right, in 2003, the world was hit with the SARS, that's Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, and MERS in 2012. Africa was not affected until this year when the world is grappling with coronavirus, starting from China to Europe, Middle East, and Africa. With China, Iran, South Korea leading the numbers of occurrences now. Nigeria recorded its first case on the 27th, no, that's 14th of February, right? Nigeria? Oh, that's Algeria, yes, 27th yeah. of February. Now, Dr. Nisochi Okeke Bokwe is here. She is a supermodel MD, physician and health expert, the contributor, speaker, writer, founder of the Dr. Nisochi and Supermodel LLC, right? If I'm correct. Yes. <laughs> now, remember, you can join the conversation. <laughs> Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS on 081 803 84663. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. First of all, I listened in on, on your show. Um, I mean, on a, on, on a radio show you, yes. you, you appeared in last, uh, was it last week Wednesday. or something? Yeah. A few days ago. It was really yeah. amazing. I said, no, we have to get <laughs> this doctor <laughs> to come and explain to us because you broke it down so well. And it's important for our audience to understand and have the right information. So let's Absolutely. start with the basic. Yes. What is coronavirus? Okay. Coronavirus, it's a viral infection. And the new coronavirus that we're all talking about, novel coronavirus, it's part of a family of various coronaviruses that do exist, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are, many exist that, there are many coronaviruses that do exist that affect both animals and humans, but in the human population, we know of only seven total that can cause actual human disease. This new coronavirus, that's the seventh one that has been known to cause any kind of disease or illness in humans. The other ones that we know, for, know about in the family of seven, yeah. four of them will cause just mild disease, like what you would see with the common cold that you'll get over pretty quickly without having to go to a hospital for, okay? And then the other two that have caused quite serious disease um, that is what you referred to about SARS and MERS, MERS yeah. that um, came about in uh, 2002, 2012, respectively. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how so, come? Sorry, how come yeah. we didn't hear anything about MERS? The, yeah, MERS and SARS. I didn't hear. About, you heard about mm -hmm. SARS, but I didn't hear about MERS, especially MERS. You know mm -hmm. why? So these viruses um, work quite uh, differently, but they have some similarities as well, okay? So the new one that we're talking about, we don't really know how it's going to really act in the population. Mm -hmm. SARS and MERS, they did affect um, a lot of the um, population, SARS, the Asian population, it didn't really affect us too no. much. So therefore, you're probably, you probably wouldn't be you know, familiar mm -hmm. with it unless you knew of somebody um, who had it at the time. Or you or were was, just very cur were, current with exactly, the news. Exactly, with yeah. the news. But now this new one, the new coronavirus, it's now affecting pretty much every single continent except Antarctica. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So what we um, know so far about the whole genesis of it to begin with, um, it really arose in Wuhan, China. There were reports that came about in December of uh, 2019 that there were these you know, mysterious um, viral pneumonias that were causing people to die there. And the question was, why? How was this um, happening? So the thought was that it pretty much emerged from some animal source in some marketplace there in Wuhan, China, mm -hmm. and then it was transmitted to a human. Yeah. And thereafter, it was human to, to human, human transmission. Mm -hmm. And what that's called is a zoonotic infection when an animal source can actually uh, infect a human okay. being. Mm -hmm. So it's not, um, it's not something that has not happened before, zoonotic infections, but I think the reason why everyone is in somewhat of a panic mode, because this is so new to us. Yeah. We don't know how this is going to affect mm -hmm. the majority of the population. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the outcome is going to be um, for mortality rate moving forward. But what we do um, learn from are other coronaviruses that occurred before, and we kind of use that as our template to try to understand what may or may not happen. But because it's a very new, I, newly identified strain, mm -hmm. we really don't know um, the behavior of it. But we, knew, do, we do know things about you know, the symptoms to look out for. Um, we know the things that we need to do to try to prevent 
ongoing spread of it. And I think that's so, the So now key, that you yeah. actually mentioned prevention, because yes. of course we've been hearing all this news about quarantine and yes. 14 days. So can you just tell us a bit about what it looks like in terms of symptomatic? Do you get, is there a hibernation period like the 14 day period? Do you get, uh, are you infectious whilst you're asymptomatic? Can you just tell us a bit about sure. that? Sure, so first and foremost, we need to know what are the symptoms to really look out for. Mm -hmm. Symptoms to look out for, the main ones are um, cough, high fever, and um, respiratory distress. That just means breathing difficulties. You start having um, problems with your uh, breathing. So those are the main things to look out for. But you know what? Those clinical symptoms also, that's the, the same clinical flu. symptoms for the common flu mm -hmm. and other respiratory so how illnesses. Do you tell the exactly. difference between both of them? So the, the thing is, you look at the whole full clinical picture. Mm -hmm. Was there a travel history involved? Were okay. you um, around somebody who recently um, had or was infected with the coronavirus? Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing about this coronavirus now, in spite of travel history, in spite of all of that, we are hearing reports in the U.S. I was just going to say that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of cases of potential community spread. Mm -hmm. What that means is that they're finding that there are people who are... Have, they have no yeah. history. Had exactly. Any, they had yeah. no, no travel history. history. Yeah. No yes. travel history. They weren't around anyone that was yeah, exactly. infected at all mm -hmm. um, that they've known of with corona. And they tested positive after they exhibited those symptoms, symptoms and then were tested for corona. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Okay, so it's a mystery, and that is what is actually a bit of a fear for some so of the now, scientific yes. community. So yes. should we be afraid? <laughs> because so, this case for me, it mm -hmm. really, really gave me the chills. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no history, there's nothing. Yeah. You can't link yeah. the person with any, you know, the known, okay, normal thing, oh yeah, there was a contact. Yeah. This case, no history, no link. Mm -hmm. So should we be afraid? So I feel that what that means is that potentially there, there's a spread going on in the community, but we don't know where that actual source is and that's moving through. So what that means for us, should we be afraid? We should be vigilant. That's what we should be doing so at do this point. So do you think point. it is airborne? Well, we know at this point that it's via respiratory droplets, the mode of transmission, okay? So if you're coughing, sneezing, you have a runny nose, any of the viral particles that come out from your sputum, from the nasal secretions, oh, mm -hmm. if you come in contact with that, that is what's going to infect you if you come in contact with um, those particles that have um, the virus in there. So that's why I have to continue to reemphasize this. Prevention is key and hand hygiene is key when we are talking about this. Oh. That's the best thing we can do now to protect each and every one of ourselves. Because guess what? The entire world population, we have no immunity to this because exactly. this is a very new, new okay. virus. Okay. So, do you think children are more uh, immune to this or you think adults are more immune to this? So no one has immunity to it at this point because we haven't been exposed to it. It's, so very, it's brand new. It's brand new so for everyone. You, it's brand new for mm -hmm. everyone. So if you come in contact with um, someone that has the coronavirus mm -hmm. and you are in contact with those infectious respiratory mm -hmm. particles, you are likely, likely. To, to get infected, infected but, as but well. But Dr. So, you, where, where do you think um, they are getting it right now in China, in Europe? You know, we have cases of um, so, you, uh, you, we're the, talking the people about that, 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 um, that got, the, they got confirmed mm -hmm. and now they are healed. Yeah. They are, there's a cure for them. Where do you think they are getting it right? Okay. In those so places? I wouldn't say there's necessarily a cure because there's no curative treatment mm -hmm. that we have at this point. Or oh, they're getting better. They're getting better, exactly. Yeah, that's the so word. the range of symptoms is from mild to moderate to severe. Mm -hmm. So not everyone is going to have a severe respiratory illness with the coronavirus that will lead yeah. them to the hospital on a ventilator and potentially Die. death. Yeah. Some people are asymptomatic meaning that they have no symptoms at all and they're walking around with just minor symptoms of maybe just a little bit of a cough or maybe no symptoms at all and they're still um, positive for the corona virus. Mm. So it just depends on what the level of severity is and uh, with the virus that you actually come in contact with because not everyone is going to yeah. face the same kind of um, serious a respiratory disease. So does, that it, those does that have to do with our immunity, our immune system? So um, in a sense, possibly, because we know the cases of those that have died from the coronavirus. Um, those that tend to have more severe illness, we see that they're um, people who have already had underlying chronic 
illnesses. Mm -hmm. So those who had uh, chronic issues with, you know, diabetes, heart disease, mm -hmm. maybe an underlying cancer. So maybe they were older and sicker yeah. to begin so with. Vulnerable. Their immune systems yeah. were already somewhat compromised mm -hmm. to begin with. So it even put them at more risk. But the interesting thing that we've been seeing that it has been affecting older adults more than it has been affecting young children. We're not hearing really a lot of reports well, about children, young children, children. Um, being infected with the coronavirus. But yeah. only time will tell how all of this is going to really evolve. So I'd just like to ask because yeah. um, we're sort of used to seeing people in Asia with the face masks. Mm -hmm. And now that we have this coronavirus, everyone's going out and buying face masks. Mm -hmm. And now we're starting to read, oh, there's an N91, there's a regular one, there's a right way to wear it, there's a right way to wear it. Way to wear it. <laughs> the masks are now so expensive. So can you just debunk a little bit of that? Okay, so I mean, there's a bit of hysteria when you mm. hear about, okay, Corona is out there, everyone wants to wear a mask, thinking that that's going to protect them and they'll be safe from um, the coronavirus, COVID-19. But the thing is, there are two different kind of masks that are out there. The masks that you're seeing most people wear, those are just surgical masks that you um, simply mm -hmm. um, put on. And if it's not even put on right, there's a chance that you are even exposed to um, different uh, particles if somebody coughs or sneezes in your face. The point of really the mask are for those who are actually very sick with an acute respiratory illness showing lots of symptoms. Because when you are symptomatic, that's the time whereby you'd be able to spread the illness more easily, um, very easily. So what's the so, incubation period for that illness? So the incubation period, the number that everyone is saying is, is up to 14 days. So that's why when you keep hearing them saying let's quarantine for 14 days, we are saying that it's uh, possible for you to have symptoms up to the 14 day period. Probably but, after as well? So th there are different reports and research that's going on. So there's, poss there's a possibility it's not confirmed yet, that this incubation period could even be longer than that. But that's a thing. It's so new of a okay. virus, we don't really know definitively Dr. what Dr. Nesuchi, I want you to are. help us debunk some of the rumors, because people are saying that sure. coronavirus cannot survive in Africa because of our region, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I mean, with, um, with the statistics mm -hmm. that it has come to Africa, with the temperate region, it's here, exactly. you know. So where, where is that, um, that truth lying? That's number one. Then number two, when people say that um, symptoms are not, uh, or no symptoms, you mentioned people that are asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. Are they able to spread the virus even without showing physical symptoms of the virus? Yes. So, <laughs> That's scary. To, to answer, okay. I'm not gonna hug anybody anymore. <laughs> Shake anybody anymore. I yeah. Talking. Okay. So um, to answer, let's answer that last question first about um, an asymptomatic um, spread. That's so it, it has been found that, you know, some people that are asymptomatic showing no symptoms are still able to be carriers of the virus and still spread it in that asymptomatic time period, mm -hmm. which is kind of scary to think about. So you wouldn't even know that, you know, somebody would have the disease because they're not coughing, sneezing in your face, but perhaps they had contact with somebody who did have the infection, they now have the infection, and they themselves don't even know that they have the infection either. So that just reiterates what we all need to be vigilant oh, about are the preventive strategies when you're dealing with everyone and anyone. Wash your hands frequently. Uh, use a hand sanitizer, alcohol-based hand san sanitizer with, with at least 60% um, alcohol in it. Just make sure that you're taking care of your hygiene as best as possible. If you yourself are sick, if you are coughing, if you're sneezing, stay at home. Don't cough in people's faces if you happen to be out there in, in public. Just really be aware of hi general hygiene measures because that can take you a long way whether we're talking about coronavirus whether we're talking about the flu whether we're talking about anything else okay, okay. So I, I was going to ask sheets. something no, no, I was going to say with, with um, quarantine mm. some people say it's the way some people say it's not the way we don't know enough so we don't know if it's worth it mm. um, it does tend to spread fear mm -hmm. so the the concept that you might be locked up away somewhere and uh, we talked earlier about the index case here who's complaining about the facilities where he's held at. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, quarantine is effective in stopping this disease? Because we've seen different approaches. So mm -hmm. the Chinese went full force and they were doing that. And then Italy seems to have exploded. And mm -hmm. it feels like Europe is not being as tight-handed as 
Asia or China be. is. So mm. what do you think? I think there is somewhat of a benefit to quarantine in that Strict if you do quarantine. know that somebody <laughs> has had that exposure, maybe they haven't started exhibiting symptoms yet, but you want to see the progression of things, where things go, so that they are not able to uh, really transmit it to anyone else. It's okay. not really that you're being held hostage. You, <laughs> you, ha you are just being monitored mm -hmm. to make sure that you are not getting more sick. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, and then oh god. Okay, yeah, go I was ahead. gonna say to answer the first question. Yeah. I didn't answer that first yeah. question about Temporary whether or not region, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. There's no genetic protection that every anyone on the African continent has against um, coronavirus. As we've seen, it's come to three countries already in exactly. all of Africa. Africa. Yep, Egypt, Algeria, and now here Nigeria. in Nigeria. And you know, there's not, there are going to be more cases. That's the that's just the fact of the matter. More cases are going to arise as time passes by, but it's just a matter of containing the cases okay, so, that we already have now. So we know the face yeah. mask yeah. protects the nose yeah. and the mouth. Mm -hmm. And in my small study of medicine, mm -hmm. I know entry points are also your eyes and your ears. So what happens when it comes to okay protecting? Because I feel that we are covering just nose and mouth. What happens to the ears and the eyes? Oh, no, no, I'm, I mean, <laughs> because it's... it's, it's it's, it's one thing to say, okay, you cover your nose and your mouth, but there's still other entry points that these things can go in through. Because I remember with Ebola, it's everywhere, you cover everywhere. So why, why are we particular about nose and mouth? Is there a particular reason or... Mm. Yeah. So when we talk about nose, mouth, eyes, we're talking about regions where you have, um, you know, mucous okay. membranes. Yeah. Okay. These are areas whereby, um, whereby sputum or various um, particles can easily... Um, expel move. from the body and move and contaminate other people. Yeah. So that's why we're very um, you know, aware and vigilant about pr um, not touching your face, not touching your nose, not touching um, your mouth, your eyes, all of those regions. Because just to paint the picture, if somebody uh, potentially did have um, coronavirus right here and they were positive for it, and they were to sneeze on the you know, table and you accidentally touched the table or touched the glass that they were using with those respiratory uh, viral particles, yeah. and then you accidentally go Go and touch those various areas of your face, entry mouth, points, yeah. nose, eyes. Those are very easy points of entry, entry. for you to, you know, acquire that. Okay, virus. so one final baby question I wanted to just ask. I was going to ask when they question, sneeze, though, sorry, darling. The table. When they sneeze on the table, how oh. long does the virus stay alive? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good question. We don't know exactly how long that is, but we just have to really be aware of our surroundings at all times. So just wiping down surfaces as frequently as possible. It's not for us to be, you know, maniacs and always wiping down our table every 30 seconds, but we have to, be, we have to really be aware of everyone and our surroundings and our hygiene practices. Awesome, so easy, quickly. Okay, okay. Yeah. quickly, one quick sure. one. Um, um, Uti was saying something earlier on about Vietnam yes. being able to actually cure the people that are, were actually infected. How, do you think that we should actually um, take cue from Vietnams or Vietnamese? They've taken and some extreme measures. So I think they had mm. 16 cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but what they uh, they claim or report that they've done mm -hmm. is to um, monitor. So these okay. people, they, they have quarantined them. Okay. Uh, and then they've... Uh, Use the anti retrovirals, are those okay, what okay. drugs are called? Okay. And then they've uh, watched their, put them on a strict diet and they're watching their oxygen saturation, so that's the amount of oxygen mm -hmm. in the blood, right? So you think so we should take a cue from them? So what I, what I would say, there are drugs that are in the experimental phase that are being experimented with that, are, that have antiviral capacity, but we do not know definitively if these are curative. It's experimental, so we don't know if it's actually working or not. To date, there are no cures. There's no medication or injection that anyone can take and all of a sudden, voila, they're cured from the coronavirus. There's no vaccination available to afford one immunity. Vaccinations take a while. We're looking at a year to a year and a half before we actually have any kind of vaccination available for this virus. So there is no cure right now. The only thing that we have to help us right now, prevention. prevention. Awesome. Yeah. I think on that note, <laughs> we'll say a very big thank you so much for coming to help us understand this, um, this coronavirus that we have found ourselves in. <laughs> All right, so thank you, Dr. Nesochi. Um, we'll go on a quick break. When we return, we'll have our second doctor with us. Please stay with us.